Russian soldiers captured German Leopard tank for the first time. During the battles for Abdiivka, the most modern German tank, Leopard 2A6, was captured by Russian soldiers. This is the first tank that Russia was able to capture out of 18 Leopard 2 tanks imported from Germany. According to Bulgarian military media outlet, some Ukrainian resources have acknowledged the loss. The German publication Bild also confirmed the loss. According to Bild, 18 Leopard 2A6 tanks delivered by Germany to Ukraine, and this is the first proven instance of a tank being captured by the Russians since the deliveries began. The Leopard 2A6 is one of the latest versions of the renowned German tank. Germany is currently developing the next two iterations, the Leopard 2A7, which has its customers mainly in the Hungarian army, and the Leopard 2A8, which remains somewhat of a mystery. However, Italy has expressed a strong desire to acquire hundreds of these units. Germany also plans to include the 2A8 version in its own army. According to Russian resources, the captured Leopard 2A6 is fully operational. The tank features side hatches, but the so-called cage atop the dome is notably absent. The grills on the side of the turret are designed to deflect some of the explosive force of an incoming anti-tank missile. These sources assert that the tank was seized while fighting near Avdiivka. According to Russian reports, the tank was ambushed by a small Russian platoon, an action that compelled the Ukrainian tank crew to abandon their vehicle. As reported by the German publication Bild, the German Ministry of Defense is deeply invested in monitoring the status of the Leopard tanks they delivered to Ukraine. German journalists claim that a significant portion of the total 18 tanks shipped to Ukraine required frequent repairs at specialized bases. Iran-backed Houthis escalate their attacks, threats to U.S. warships increase. The Houthis of Yemen think they're at war with the West. According to Bloomberg, with the news that three undersea fiber optic cables were severed off the Yemeni coast and that one of their ballistic missiles took lives for the first time upon striking a container ship, it's time to acknowledge that we are at war with them. The much harder question is how to fight this kind of asymmetric foe. What the Houthis are proving is that the developed West faces rising challenges on two fronts from weaker enemies ranging from non-state actors to the likes of Iran and Russia. And for all the still extraordinary power of US carrier fleets, the answer to those challenges can't always boil down to just getting tougher, drawing lines and establishing deterrence the standard Washington strategy. Recently, US-British forces shot down dozens of kamikaze drones, missiles engaged in an attack launched by Iran-backed Houthis in the Red Sea region. The Houthi operation, largest reported to date, was against a Singapore-flagged cargo ship and several American warships. The Houthis military spokesman Yahya Sari confirmed the strike and said the attacks would continue until the aggression stops and the siege on the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip is lifted, according to Iran International Newsroom. The Houthis have been targeting commercial vessels and often U.S. warships in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden since November, disrupting global maritime trade, forcing major shipping companies out of the region, sinking one ship and killing three civilian crew members. The attacks began after Iran's ruler, Ali Khamenei called for Muslims to blockade Israel. The swarm attack last Saturday may be seen as a significant escalation since it's much more likely that one out of the many drones flying together evades the defense systems and hits a U.S. warship, which would force the Biden administration to elevate the level of its response, possibly even targeting Iranian assets. This time, however, no U.S. or coalition Navy vessels were damaged in the attack and there were also no reports by commercial ships of damage. According to U.S. Central Command, the action was taken to protect freedom of navigation and make international waters safer and more secure. Ukraine announces major operation in Crimea amid Black Sea actions. 
The chief of the main directorate of intelligence of Ukraine, Kirill Budinov, has announced the preparation of a significant operation in Crimea amid the actions carried out by the reconnaissance units of combat missions, referring to the main directorate of intelligence's documentary film, War for the Sea, from the Dnipro to Crimea. Commenting on the significance of the combat missions carried out by the reconnaissance units, particularly in the Black Sea and in the temporarily occupied territory of Crimea, Budanov said that these are all preparatory measures for a serious operation in Crimea. This is a test of the accuracy of our claims about the routes of approach and withdrawal from there. Also, it is a morale boost for the population that's been living under occupation for already 10 years. Many of them believe they have been forgotten, Kirillo Budinov said. The main directorate of intelligence disclosed operations successfully executed by the department's special forces. In the summer of 2023, the Shaman Special Forces Unit crossed to the left bank of the Dnipro River in the Kherson region. After destroying and capturing invaders, the first steps were taken towards establishing a left bank bridgehead in that area. Also in July of last year, the Timor Special Forces Unit regained control of the state-owned oil and gas extraction platform, Ukraine, and later participated in the Crimea operation, Awakening of Strength. Regarding the destruction of enemy fleet ships, the main directorate of intelligence said that this is the responsibility area of the Group 13 Special Forces Unit. On the night of February the 1st, Ukrainian forces destroyed the missile boat Ivanovets of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. As reported by the main directorate of intelligence, the Ivanovets boat was to some extent the pride of the Russian fleet. There were only three units of such ships. It could accommodate up to 40 Russian sailors. Furthermore, near the shores of the temporarily occupied Crimea on February the 14th, the main directorate of intelligence and the armed forces of Ukraine destroyed the Russian large landing ship Cesar Kunikov near Alupka off the coast of Crimea. On the night of March the 5th, 2024, the Special Forces Unit, Group 13 of the Main Directorate of Intelligence of Ukraine, attacked the patrol ship Sergei Kotov of the Russian Black Sea Fleet.